That is, um, I mean, just superior knowledge for all of our subscribers to have that kind yeah. of information. Um, let's talk now about your process of getting exposure night exteriors. Okay. Um, yeah, for for that, it, it's kind of just like shooting an interior. You're kind of starting from scratch. So you want to kind of look at, you know, what you have to start with existing like sodium vapor street lights or are you going off moonlight? Um, what does the script say? Um, is it candlelit? Is it a campfire? Um, so yeah, you're starting from scratch and on most cameras that I shoot on anyway, I really have to light the night exteriors a lot. Um, because, uh, yeah, if you're like just using like a candle, that candle's going to like blow out super like white hot. So you want to kind of fill it in. If I'm doing like candlelit stuff or campfire scenes, I'll do like um, a tungsten unit usually with like extra warmth and party gels on there, like yellows and oranges and red. Um, diffuse it, not too crazy because fire is a little bit of a hard source. Um, try to match the size of it. Um, and I'll throw it on a magic gadget, which kind of what is gives that? that flicker. It's like a flicker, oh, flicker oh, box. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So it'll give that pulsating. You can do that with like an airy sky panel too. But sure, sure. Okay. if you're going old school. Yeah. Um, more, it's a little bit more budget friendly too. It's like 25 bucks to run a magic gadget if you already have tungsten units. Um, it just plugs into it? Yeah, you, it plugs into it just like a, like a big dimmer would. Oh, yeah, yeah. And okay. you just kind of like, looks like an audio mixer and you just kind of set the frequency and the uh, speed and all that that you want. <clears throat> um, so you would add, you would augment what is there. You would augment the 2K on the magic gadget to be your campfire, right? Um, if you're going off of like a moonlit uh, field or something, uh, a lot of people like, you know, Deacons or Robert Ellswood, they'll get like these huge soft sources, like they'll do the big, you know, HMI balloons and stuff. Um, but is moonlight a soft source or is it a hard light? That's kind of up to the DP to decide, I think, and the director. Um, so yeah, you. I like to use larger, softer sources. I just think it looks a little bit better at night um, to kind of like uh, paint the background and use it more as a backlight. And you can kind of bring a separate unit around as like kind of like the fill, say if you're going only moonlight, you know, you want something in their eyes, maybe an eye light. Um, you want the backlight to kind of give texture to the background. And then a little bit of like a soft key to kind of augment, you know, the ambience of the moonlight. Hmm. Um, if you're doing, you know, a, like a street scene, um, you just kind of, I try to put as many practicals I can in the shot, as many street lights, cause then it shows, you know, your world and what you're lighting from. And it also adds more contrast. So, um, if you show a couple street lamps in the shot and you're wide, and then when you punch in, they're in the background, kind of, you know, bulk it out. Um, I just think it ties the whole image together a lot better. Sure. Um, so yeah, you just augment that with what you have. That could be a sky panel set to sodium vapor. Uh, it could be a tungsten unit with like a cocktail of gels. I've seen like um, um, plus green thrown with like straw and uh, CTO. It just all combined. Yeah, you can kind of get funky with it. What do you do with uh, as far as your color temperature in camera? Oh, for Generally, I'm um, in like the 36 to maybe 4,400 range. Uh -huh. I'm a little bit more neutral. Okay. Um, if I'm a little bit more in the 4,400 range, I'm letting the, the moonlight be a little bit more um, neutral in the color wise. I'm not letting it go like really saturated blue. Because uh -huh. if I'm using like HMIs or LEDs, generally, like They're also, blue. like what is moonlight? Is right. it soft and white or does it have a little bit of like a cool you know glow to it right i like to go with a little bit cooler but not over cool could also depend on the project too mm -hmm. yeah if you want to be vittorio storaro or something go really saturated with your colors gotcha um but yeah you you kind of white balance to what you're shooting um nighttime what's going to be lighting it is going to be mostly like Tungsten practicals in my head. Mm -hmm. um, I like to like switch all the bulbs out when I'm shooting to tungsten 
inside houses and stuff like that. Oh, sure, sure, okay. Um, I don't like any daylight LEDs or fluorescent, you know, really in there. Is unless that it's nighttime like, only? Unless it's like a stylized right. drama where I want it to be gritty. Okay. And I like the blue-green kind of feel in like a bathroom or a kitchen or something, but yeah. generally I want like warm lamplight. Is that across the board or is it you just strictly speaking uh, If I'm night shooting night... Okay. You know, so it could be like a porch light, uh -huh. you know, or... So yeah, it gives it a nice warm feel. Yeah, if you're like shooting in somebody's front yard, yeah. right? And you want a little moonlight raking across like bushes and trees, you know, in their hair maybe. And then you want a key with like a porch light or yeah. light through a window, you know, gotcha. coming from the house. So then, so then you're saying so the you're moonlight... More towards, your white balance is more towards tungsten and okay. your moonlight's getting a little Blue. cooler. Right, gotcha. But you can always, you know, do that to taste as well. Gotcha. Cool. That's cool um, too. You can make it more neutral. That or, adds... Like a white light. Right. If you want. And that would add some nice color contrast too. Yeah. Generally for night though, I'm I'm never shooting at like 5,600 Kelvin daylight. I'm usually more in, in... that 4,000 range or gotcha. tungsten range. Got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so let's delve into uh, some some examples of your work and we okay. can uh, we can delve into that. And we're looking at what here, John? Um, Army of One, the Alabama feature again. Okay. So this is like the most like dirty redneck South you can imagine. Okay. That's what the director is going for. Okay. They, they all live on this compound. Um, I was really inspired by um, Ozark. Oh yeah. How that DP used practicals and like he even like threw a lot of like party gels on everything. Okay. So I pushed for more like cyan moonlight um, it was like a fluorescent green gel that I, I threw on these HMIs. Um, so here's the practical. It was like a mercury vapor. So it was naturally just like spiking green. Okay. So that worked for me. It was like, I love that. Um, I think uh, camera left here we had um, a 1.2 HMI and that was coming through the uh, 12 by quarter grid. So the main light hitting the cabin was a 1.2 HMI par um, coming through quarter grid with that, um, that fluorescent green cyan gel. Um, it, we just softened it up to make it spread and uh, not look too sourcey. Um, inside we had the uh, sky panel S60. Nice. Um, just dialed into like a nice warm tungsten. It's probably like set to 2500 Kelvin. Um, that's what's supplying the key on their left side there. Um, in the background, we have the 4K HMI. Get as much of the trees as we could with that green gel on there. Just to add a little bit more depth back, to the background. Back in that area? Yeah, you see that tree? Oh, yeah. Just above okay. the roof. Okay. Um, yeah, this is where false color kind of comes in as well and you said you said the the airy sky panel is inside the house it's at, yeah it's inside coming okay. through the window hitting them okay. there and where is the moon <clears throat> in this whole equation yeah you could say that the moonlight was coming from the left side of frame here and we kept that consistent with the uh, 4k in the background everything was pushing from the left except the sky panel inside pushing from the right um yeah, because we wanted to see the trees. We, you know, if you like put the, if you put the light too far in the back, you're not kind of illuminating the tree to its full potential. It's kind of ambiguous. Where's your moon? You right. Know, it can be side, it can be back. I, I was just curious where the actual moon was, <clears throat> if you remembered that or no. There was, it was like non-existent. Mm, I think it was right up over the roof, actually. Okay. I might've had a, BTS still of that. Okay. It's funny I remember that because typically when you're lighting for moonlight, you don't even look where the moon is because it's, you, it's not going to light your not, scene. It's not doing <laughs> shit for you, right? Yeah. Unless it's in the shop, mm -hmm. you could kind of work with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you'd have to like bring out that moon in post. Gotcha. Because it's just going to be a white dot. Right. So that that I, I think that's a good that's a good note for for our viewers. Is like in the sun, because the sun is such a huge source you have to you utilize it you have to work you have to it. establish it but at night you can 
make the moon whatever the, whatever you want, pretty much. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, you can really play around. Um, I'm calling this Moonlight, even though I let it be a little bit more cyan. Mm -hmm. It's ju just a stylistic choice to give this like that dirty South kind of right. grunge. Cool. And just a tighter, tighter ang angle of it all. Going just, in tight. Just a tighter angle of it all here. On the, of the porch, and that and, and that inside is the sky panel. Yeah, I think is that we, gelled or no? Is it just colored? Is it RGB? No. Yeah, it is RGB. Sky panel, yeah, it's RGB. Oh shit! So you can really dial in that hue because it looks kind of red or something. It, looks... it might be the LUT. Yeah. Oh right. right. But I, I'm thinking it's around 2,500 Kelvin. Got you. It, it's on the warmer side for yeah, sure. Yeah, this looks great. And here he's got that that vapor light just kind of doing his yeah it's just kind of a background i don't know if it's really doing much on him what's hitting him here then? that would be the 12 by ah uh, the moon yeah our moonlight gotcha so you can see the the 4k hmi at play in the back trees there yeah and that's I love way way back right yeah okay just to give something in the background sure yeah and uh Add i love depth, uh, right? gary casper here turns right into the source the the key of the other guy as well we kind of do a, a rack focus to him and you know this is a way of shooting two angles at one time yeah it's that's a good takeaway too because that's the second time you mentioned where you like the actors to look into the source yeah yeah i think uh you you get the most like depth of, on their face that way got you and uh it'll pop in their eyes better here's another scene where we just had to you know, start from scratch. This moon was actually really bright this night. It's funny that you mentioned the moon because typically when I'm shooting moonlight, I don't pay attention at all. Gotcha. But this was just like a beautiful, beautiful night, full moon. Um, and we could actually almost work without a lot of like lighting. Wow. I remember, you know, when we were breaking stuff down, you could actually see because there's like no light pollution at all. It's just like the moon. So this is no other sources <clears throat> here? No, that that's a 4K HMI. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had to really light this up. Okay. You know, gotcha. shooting on the Ursa Mini 4.6K. Um, yeah. We were shooting at 800 ISO. You really have to light it. What is is that? That's an APS-C or no? Super 35. Super 35, yeah. So it's not quite as bad as Micro Four Thirds. It, it's no, but it, it's the um, it's the sensor. Yeah. How it's designed. It doesn't have dual native. Mm -mm. Okay. The, the Pocket 4K probably. Would have done way better in these. You things. think so? Yeah. Maybe with a speed booster. Six K as well. Yeah. Because um. Well, definitely. Yeah, the yeah. low light is just improved. Yeah. Um, the G two though, I'm, I'm it's sure got that, that's native. better than my four point six, but that's what I had back then. Right. But you said you're getting the G two. Yeah, I would. I would love to do that. If I don't go for the Alexa Mini. You're going. You're going <laughs> that, dude. That would be amazing. Yeah, Holy I gotta fuck. pay off some things first. <laughs> that's that's the next that's the next course you're going for the mini yeah because the lf yeah people drop their prices and now and now bit, there's yeah. gonna yeah you can get a mini for that's true everyone jumped to the lf yeah but yep cool man 4k side light raking these trees in the background we had um the sky panel set to red uh -huh. that's augmenting the tail light on this little on gotcha. this little gator gotcha yeah and we had the I think it was the 1.2 or the M18 coming from the left, you know, nice and soft. I think it was a, a bounce in this case to um, to light up the uh, the foreground here with that moonlight. So the uh, 4K HMI is like for the the back trees is way off to the right, hidden okay. behind these trees over there. Okay. And then we had our other moonlight coming from the left, and then the sky panel on the right, supplying the red. Awesome. So the reason we use the sky panel here for the red, we were, you know, we could have used it as moonlight, but we decided to do it because you'll see as they drive away, we wanted to do a little lighting gag for the taillight. See, it should have got brighter there. See, it kind of fades off mm -hmm. as they drive away. That's why we use the sky panel for the dimming function. Got you. Oh, we had I it all see. flagged off, oh. trying to make it look as less sourcey as we could. But I got you. They, they drive off into the woods there, and you know the headlights are doing a little bit of the work too. But just to get some detail in their background, so it's not yeah. driving into black darkness. So. The edge. 
Interesting. Um, this is the last one. Campfire. This is the campfire that I mentioned. Magic Gadget um, as a flicker mm -hmm. effect for our 2K. It's gelled up red, red and um, CTO, full CTO. I find that full CTO just about does it for Firelight. Um, but we add a little red. Gaffer's like, you know, trust me on that. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And just built a little soft box for it, cut it with um, cider flags and threw like a little two by three silk in front of it. Just created a, like a little box to shine the 2K through. Lit up the background with um, M18 and a 1.2. 4K probably would have been a little overkill being that close. So we used the uh, smaller units there. And Practical's doing a lot of the work as well. Yeah, there's a lot of them there, huh? Well, you got four in the fire. Yep. New scene. This was a one -er. Oh, okay. Um, just, um, I I did this on a curved dolly. Um, yeah, I, I had fun with this one. Um, just for talking with the crew, you come up with ideas. Um, we already had the circle track set up from a different um, scene, so we just flew it over. And I'm like, yeah, let's try the Warner. And I like how she's a little bit more frontally lit in the beginning here. Because as she gets a little bit more emotional here with her speech, the lighting starts to get more emotional with her. Because we kind of wrap around to her shadow side. And we kind of end into as close of a single as we could get with that curved track. But it just gets a little bit more moody towards the end of the shot because she's like really angry here and mourning. So the lighting complemented that in my eyes. Sweet. All right, brother, thank you so much for coming in today and taking the time to share with us this, uh, it's, it's invaluable knowledge and I think it's just, it's great for me to, well, thank you. to learn that stuff and for all of them as well. I, I think they'll find it beneficial. Let them know where they can find you anywhere online, uh, any kind of social media. Um, yeah, if you got the spelling up there, it'd be much easier to find it, but it's at John Schweigart. That's my, uh, Instagram. Um, yeah, check it out. I, I kind of go into, you know, some technical specs on there usually, but it's mostly, you know, just, you know, examples of my work and what I'm up to. Um, you can check out my website at johnschweigart.com. Um, on there you can see a little bit more than my Instagram. I got a little bit more like BTS style photos of lighting setups. And oh, nice. You can see like the after pics on there of, of the work as well that you, you'll probably find on Instagram too, but my reel's up there. Um, yeah, check it out. I hope I was helpful to you guys. Um, yeah, I can't believe I uh, finally did this with you. It's been <laughs> like months of since you asking me. Yeah, <laughs> since January, I think. Yeah. That's great, man. Well, thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, you got it. We really Thanks appreciated it. And uh, yeah, do yourselves a favor, follow this guy, and you will be just impressed on the daily, pretty much. There is some great appreciate things it. coming through all the time. Love it. That's why I can't wait to work with this guy again on our next big project. <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it.